Hello Mini Pilots, my name is Paul Tace. In this video we're going to be looking at how we can get more cinematic footage from our DJI Mavic Mini. Let's get started. Okay guys, now I'm sure most of you know the DJI Mavic Mini has now been updated with a new setting so we can shoot at 24 frames per second, we can shoot in manual and we can also shoot in manual white balance. Now all these things are really going to help us get more professional footage and it's going to give us the option to make our footage more cinematic. Joe is one of my uh, first subscribers, he's asked if I could shoot a video on how to shoot cinematic footage and I think this is a really great idea. So what I've done is I've created this video and I'm going to break it down into different sections. Uh, now this may be because there's only certain things you want to know about so I'll drop down in the description below where you need to jump to if that's the only thing you're interested in. The first section is going to be planning. So this is obviously going to be things we're doing before we've even left the house or before we've taken the drone off. The second section is going to be settings, the best settings we can use to get cinematic footage. Uh, the section after that is going to be flying, techniques we can do and ways we can use the controller to get the best out of our drone. And finally we're going to be looking at editing and things we can do to really give our footage a lot of impact and really make it stand out. So as I said, we're going to start off with planning. Uh, now this is going to be things we can do even before we've left the house. Now if you're like me, you might get up a bit late, and if possible you want to go to bed early, maybe I'm showing my age a bit there, but um, we tend to shoot more towards the middle of the day when the sun's up high and it's nice and bright. But there is the golden hour, which is the hour after sunrise and an hour before sunset, which is going to give a nice golden glow, and it's going to have a nice sky, a nice sunset, and the light's just going to be a lot more diffused and a lot better for shooting in. So if you found a nice subject or a nice place to shoot, just think about what time you might want to go, what might give you the best light. So if you want to capture a nice subject or a nice place, it may be worth thinking about getting up early in the morning or going there later at night and getting it just as the sun's coming up or down. And then another thing to think about is what kind of shots we want to get from this. Now I'm going to make a video on my five favourite shots and if you watch this video it will show you different ways you can shoot the same subject. So this means we can put our minis up in the air and get various shots just using these techniques if this sounds of interest to you, hit that subscribe button, that bell icon, and you'll know as soon as it comes out. So in the planning stage, we're going to be looking at things like the weather, the time of day we're going to be flying, and think about what we're shooting and how we're going to shoot it. And this will just set us up so we're not wasting battery, flying around, not knowing what we're really after. So next we're going to be looking at the settings, and there's certain things we should set which are just going to help our video look more professional by the end. So the first thing I'm going to want to look at is the exposure, and um, as I've, I've done a video on this before actually, I'll drop a link in the uh, top right hand corner now. And this is basically going to show us um, the importance of using the uh, exposure lock, which is something you want to do if you don't want to shoot manual. So it might be worth looking at that video. But now they've brought out the update using manual, I would recommend shooting in manual all the time. By shooting in manual, we can make sure we've got the shutter speed we want. And we also know that the exposure is not going to change mid shot, which it can do if you're shooting on automatic. Now to capture cinematic footage, we want to be shooting at 24 frames a second on a 1 60th of a second shutter. Now with the Mavic Mini, this isn't always going to be possible unless you have ND filters. Now I personally haven't used ND filters for my Mavic Mini, and this is basically because I don't feel it improves your footage enough to spend £100 on the filters. But what I have done is I've just found some cheap filters for £20 which I've ordered, and I'll be doing a review on them later, and I'll be seeing if they're as good as the expensive ones. Uh, if you're interested in seeing that video, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell icon. But I'm going to briefly touch on them because if you really want to get cinematic footage, this will really help. If you want to shoot at 1 60th of a second, but it's a bright sunny day, you'll find that your footage is incredibly overexposed. It will probably be completely white. So what we can do is we can put an ND filter on the Mini and this will make everything look darker. Now this is an ND filter I use for my SLR and as you can see, it's reduced the exposure. As we can't change the aperture of the Mini, we can put a darker lens in front of it and this will help us be able to drop down to 1 60th of a second. Now as I say, this is something that we might not want to consider because it's an extra cost on top of the Mini, but if it is, I will have a video coming up later which will explain this in more detail. Now the next thing we want to look at is the ISO. We want to have the ISO set as low as possible and in this case we're going to want it at 100 because that's the lowest the Mavic Mini can do. Having a low ISO as possible is going to reduce any grain we get in the picture and it will just give us the highest quality finish we can get. Uh, now something else we can do when looking at exposure is look at the histogram. Now to look at the histogram we can go into the settings in the top right hand corner of our screen. We can then go into camera and then we can go down to advanced shooting settings. Here we can see we've got histogram and overexposure warning. 
If you tap both of them, you can turn them on, and then we'll be able to see if anything's overexposed. Now if we turn on the histogram, we'll see a blob or two. If all the graph is over to the left-hand side, it means that the dark parts of your pictures are going to be completely black, and if our graph is set mostly over to the right-hand side, it will show that most of our picture is white. Now overexposed highlights is something that's going to be a problem flying a drone. Because of the sky, it's generally a lot brighter than the things around it. So what we should do if our highlights are burnt out is drop down the exposure because post editing we can bring up shadows to a certain amount in uh, post editing but if this overexposed we can't drop them down to make them darker. If you'd like more information on the histogram drop a comment in the section down below and I'd be happy to do a video on that. The other thing we can do is turn on our overexposure warning. This is going to flash in the white areas, uh, it's going to flash black and white so we're going to know if something is overexposed or not as we're filming and then we can adjust the exposure accordingly. Now whilst we're in the advanced settings, another thing we're going to want to look at is the white balance. And now usually it'll be set to automatic, but ideally we want to set that to manual, because if it's automatic, the white balance can change as we're flying around, whereas if it's set to manual, we know it's set, so the white balance just simply isn't going to change. Now the white balance can slightly change the colour of your image, and it can look really unprofessional if this does it halfway through a shot. So basically all we need to know is that we can set the white balance and we can slide this slider up and down to make our picture look the correct colour. And at this stage that's all we really need to know. If you want more details on this I can do a video on this. Again let me know in this description down below. So once we've decided we want to do a video and we've got to choose what size video we want we can choose 1080 or 27K. So 1080 is going to be a smaller file size and it's going to give us less information. If you shoot at 2.7K it will give us more freedom of what we can do afterwards. If you're simply shooting video for social media and you just want it to look really nice, 1080 should be fine. If you really want to push the limits a bit more, you can shoot at 2.7K. Now another thing I've mentioned, if you want to use the Vertico effect, which is something I've done a video about previously, I'll drop a link in the top right hand corner now, shooting at 2.7K will give us more options afterwards if we want to edit things. So if you're really keen on post production and doing lots of different editing effects, 2.7K may be a better choice for you. The next thing we want to look at is what frame rate to shoot at. Now, for a cinematic effect, the best frame rate to use is 24 frames a second. And this is because they use 24 frames a second in films. So if you shoot at 24 frames a second, this is going to give you nice smooth footage that you can drop onto a timeline at 24 frames per second. However, if you do shoot at a higher frame rate, you can still drop this onto a timeline and adjust it to 24 frames per second afterwards. And I have a video again on how to do this, link in the top right hand corner and in the description down below. And if you need more information on this, you should look at that video. The thing I will mention about this video is it shows you in DaVinci Resolve and in Premiere Pro of how to make the frames per second of your footage match the timeline. But ultimately we want to shoot on 24 frames a second unless we want slow motion footage in which case we can shoot at a higher frame rate of up to 60 frames per second. And lastly if we look in the top right hand corner we should have it set to cinematic or smooth mode just to make sure we get a nice smooth flight. Now the next thing we're going to look at is actually flying the drone itself and looking at how we control it. So the first thing I want to mention is that you don't really want to change course once you've started your shot. So once you've hit that record button, if you're moving forwards, you don't want to go backwards and forwards on the stick. And I'm looking at you Joe, you should not flick your stick, okay? So this just means if we're moving forwards and then we decide we don't like the direction we're flying in, don't just flick your stick backwards and forwards. This will make the shot unusable and it will really give a jerky motion and this will completely eliminate it from passing the cinematic footage. So even if we're in cinematic mode and we're looking side to side, it's really not going to look great as we're going along. So obviously if we've got it locked to the left because we're circling around something, this is going to be fine, but again, just not flicking or doing any jerky movements with the sticks. Now I personally have a bad habit where I just use my thumbs to control like this. Uh, this is probably from my uh, PlayStation days. Um, I'm just used to holding control out and using my thumbs. A lot of professionals will tell you to grab the sticks and move them very gently, and this will give you more control over what you can do. As I say, this is not something I do personally, but it's something that people recommend, so I will let you know. Another tip I've heard that some other people do is to take the sticks off. And if you take the sticks off, um, you can control uh, just using the ball. It can potentially make your motion smoother. Again, this is not something that I do, but it might be worth experimenting with and seeing if it works for you. The next thing we're going to look at is the advanced settings. Now again I have just done a video on this so if you want this in more detail you can have a look at that video uh, top, in the top right hand corner now or in the description down below. But this is basically looking at the advanced gimbal settings 
and in here we can change them to make the gimbal run more smoothly and we can also change the speed to make sure we get the speed that we like. Now if you do choose just to have a fast speed and a very responsive remote, we just need to bear in mind we need to be moving the joysticks very softly and very gently. And lastly, I just want to mention again that we want to be doing various different types of shots. If we're just in the sky all the time, flying over, it's going to be very repetitive footage. But if we get down low, we may fly through some objects, uh, get close to other things, and then maybe shoot down and at different angles. It's just going to make our video look more fun and more interesting. So if you got to this stage, well done. That's a lot of talking so far. But what we're going to look at next is uh, once we've got all this lovely, well exposed footage and it's nice and smooth, we're going to look at what we can do in post-production. Now if you don't want to spend loads of money on editing software, um, DaVinci Resolve, um, I've got a link in the top right hand corner now, is free to download and it's a really impressive piece of software and it's more than capable of everything you're going to need to do at this level. And it's also worth mentioning that the DJI app can do most of this stuff as well in terms of placing music and also colour grading, which are things we're going to be looking at now. Now the first thing we want to do when we're editing is make sure that the timeline is set to 24 frames per second. Uh, so when we create a new one, we can either, if we're in a DaVinci Resolve, we can go into project settings, or uh, if you're in Premiere Pro, you probably know how to do this already, but you can set that to 24 frames per second too. So the first thing when we start editing is to think about what music we want in the background. This is gonna be really important, so don't just make a snap judgment, look through different types of music, and if you're going to be posting it online, just make sure you've got the copyright to it, otherwise you might find yourself in some legal trouble. So what I do is I lay down the music first, and then what I'll do is I'll edit the footage to the music to make sure the footage changes as the beat happens in the music. Now again, I do have a video on this. There's a link in the top right hand corner now or in the description down below. Now next thing I'm going to mention is that if we've been filming all the time, we're going to want to clip out a lot of the bad footage with the jerky movements and just make sure we don't use this and that we only use the nice smooth footage. The next thing we might want to consider doing is looking at the colour grading. Now what the colour grading is going to do is it's going to change the shadows and the highlights and what colour they are and what tints they are. When you watch some movies, if you watch something like the recent Joker movie, you'll notice there's quite an extreme colour grading and it really sets the mood of the movie. Now this is something that's going to change person to person and you may decide you don't want to colour grade them at all. Now a really common one with movies is to uh, make the highlights yellow and to make the shadows more blue. Now I'm going to show you here in DaVinci Resolve really quickly. We're going to go down to the bottom here and we're going to click on the colour icon. From there we're going to go over to the wheel to make sure we have the colour wheels up and then you will see these three wheels. Now the one on the left is going to control our shadows, the one in the middle will control our midtones, and on the one on the right will control our highlights. So if I go to the one on the right and I boost this into the yellow area, and then I go down to shadows and I boost this into the blue area, you can see it gives it a very slight tint, but this is something that a lot of people won't think of doing. So by doing this, you can make it look more professional and more cinematic. Now from here, you can really just have a lot of fun and experiment what works for you. But if you do want more information on this, uh, drop a comment in the section down below and I'll be happy to make one for you. Okay guys, so now we can just export it. Now it depends on what you want to use it for and how you export it. If you want to export it for YouTube, you can go into DaVinci Resolve and you can go to the preset settings and it will actually have one specially for YouTube. Now if you're just exporting it to use it on your home computer and to show people that way, uh, MPEG4 will be fine. I do have more information on how to export things in DaVinci Resolve. Uh, if you click the top right hand corner now or see in the description down below, if you go towards the end of that video, you will be able to see more detail of how to export video. Okay guys, so that should pretty much sum up how to get cinematic footage from planning right through to editing afterwards and exporting. If you do have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comment section down below. Now this has been a particularly long video for me, so hitting that like button is a really huge support and will encourage me to do more like this in the future. And that's it for this video guys, I hope to see you in the next one.